I'm excited to share uh, with you a brand new word. I'm gonna entitle this Building on uh, God's Word. And so I wanna read you a scripture today from Matthew chapter seven, verse 24 to 27. This is what it says. Uh, It's Jesus speaking. And he says this, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person that builds a house on a sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. I really felt God lay this scripture on my heart this week. And I thought, man, if there was ever a word for all of us uh, in due season, this is it. In a time when it seems like everything is in turmoil and upside down, we need clarity about how to live our life. And Jesus gives us some wisdom here. He says, anyone that listens to my teaching, listen to what Jesus says. If anyone listens to my word, he goes, that, that person is gonna be wise. And it's, it's the same as somebody building a house, a structure, a building, digging down and building it on a solid foundation, on solid rock. And even though it rains and even though it floods and everything goes crazy around it, it's gonna stand strong because it's built on a solid foundation. The world we live in is full of quick advice, quick advice. If you need advice on anything, you can jump on your smartphone, tablet, your computer, you can Google it, uh, you know, just get, get onto a forum and you can get advice on just about everything. Not, not necessarily good advice, but you can find advice for anything. And I think the more uncertain our lives are, the more question marks we have, the more we're searching for a little bit of wisdom, the more we're searching for a little bit of advice and understanding some kind of answer to keep my life stable right? Uh, what's, the, what's the best way to work from home? How, how should I manage my finance? Uh, what, how do I deal with this in my family? Uh, maybe you've been searching, what are the best masks to wear? The most comfortable mask, the most fashionable mask, uh, the most breathable mask. Uh, I mean, whatever we need, we start searching for answers. And what Jesus said is this. Jesus said, God's word is like a solid foundation. God's word is stable. There are some people's advice you can't trust. Have you ever had a friend like that? They got a lot of advice and none of it is correct. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and they'll offer it freely. And yet you realize again and again, that advice is not wrong. But Jesus says, hey, God's word is solid, like the foundation of a house. In other words, it has staying power. So let me ask you, in your life, your family, your walk with God, do you have staying power? Do you feel like in this season you are stable, firm, secure, or are there certain things that have been kind of shaking you? Because what Jesus says is the word of God has that kind of foundation for us. Look, the rain and the floods are inevitable. I love the way Jesus says it. He says, this man built, uh, that listens to my word, it's like someone that builds a house on solid rock. And listen, he says, when the rain comes in torrents, though it comes in torrents, when the flood waters rise, or, or the other guy it doesn't listen to Jesus' teaching. He says, that's like someone building on sand. And when the rain comes, the rain is inevitable. It's inevitable. It's coming. There will be flood waters. There is no person on earth that doesn't face some kind of difficulty, calamity, some kind of obstacle and circumstance that gets in the way of life as we really wish it would be, right? It's, it's totally inevitable for us. And so the issue is how do we handle it? How do we prepare our lives to go through situations like that? And I wanna encourage you, don't focus on what used to be in your life. Don't just focus on all the problems you have in front of you. I I think what we should be focused on is what Jesus said. We should be focused on building our house. How am I building? What am I basing my life on? What am I implementing? Am Am I applying his word to my life? And when we build according to God's word, we have something solid, we have something reliable, We have something proven to guide our decisions, to set our priorities, and to determine our future. This is what God desires for us. Jesus said, anybody that hears my word and he does it, anybody that obeys my word, uh, uh, there are a lot of people that hear the word of God. Every week, this stream goes out. We hear the word, but Jesus says, hey, I don't want you to be someone that just hears it. If you would put it into practice, if you could hear what God is speaking right now, 
There are so many words from the media, from our friends, colleagues, relatives. There are people that will speak words into your life, but he says none of that is totally secure, but God's word is secure because God's word never changes. Come on, amen. It never changes. You can always rely on it. And you and I are meant to build our lives on the word of God. We're meant to build our lives on the foundation of his word. And the way that we build according to his word is we obey it. We listen, we hear it, and we obey. And so I, as I was thinking about this, I felt God speaking to my heart. I want to just, just give you four types of words that we need to respond to that I see in scripture, four words that God speaks to us that we need to learn how to respond to and, and put into practice in our life to build that kind of foundation. The first word is this, it's the word of commission. The word of commission. The word commission means this, it means the act of committing or entrusting a person or group with supervisory power or authority, right? The act of committing or entrusting a person or group with supervisory power or authority, an authoritative order, charge or direction, or authority granted for a particular action or function. You know, one of the words that Jesus speaks to us is a word of commission. And when we put that word into practice, when we obey it, we are laying a solid foundation. Something shifts in the atmosphere of our life. We are beginning to build on things that are unshakable, immovable, that give us access into his blessing. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, here's the word of commission. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is one of the last things that Jesus spoke to his disciples on earth. And how many know the last thing someone says is usually the most important thing. Jesus gives them this final charge. Before he ascends to heaven, he says, I wanna give you the direction for the future. He pulls together the disciples, the, the nucleus of the church. Let me set the course. What are you gonna do after I'm gone? And this is the challenge or the commission that he gives them. He says, go make disciples of all the nations, teach them everything I taught you, start influencing people for me, and I'm gonna be with you wherever you go. You know, salvation brings identity in our life, but the commission brings authority. When you are saved, when you put your faith in Jesus, you receive an identity as a child of God. And that is real. I'm a son. Maybe you're a, a, a woman today, a daughter of God, right? I get that identity. I'm not just somebody. I belong to him. And when I put my faith in Jesus, that's what I receive. But when I receive his commission and I hear his word, go make disciples, and I begin to obey that word, and I walk that word out, that is when I receive the authority. That's exactly what Jesus said. He says, make disciples, baptize them, teach them, and I'm gonna be with you always. You have my authority. Wherever you go, I'm with you. Wherever you go, my power is there. Wherever you go, my eyes are on you. My favor is on you. There's authority. You see, God's promises are available to those that believe and respond. And if you say, Jeremy, how do I build my life in this season? How do I get stability? Well, you gotta go back to God's word. And the first thing that I wanna point out is this word of commission. This word of commission. What does that have to do with, with the current situation in my family and my life? No, what, where we start is we start with obedience. And I start with obedience to the commission of God. When I build my life around impacting people and making disciples, heavenly resources begin to flow. Jesus promised, he said, hey, these signs will follow those that believe in my name. They're gonna lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They're gonna cast out demons in my name. He said, if we need anything, we could ask him that he would provide for whatever we needed. Listen to his promise. I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. So if you want access to heavenly resources, you want the stability of knowing God's presence. This is the word that I need to begin to obey is the word of commission. Not just hearing it, but actually believing it and obeying it. Why? Because this is actually what has God's attention. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What is God doing on the earth right now? He's moving on hearts. 
He's drawing people to himself. He's building his church. And if you want to be somewhere that you get God's attention, you better be where his attention is focused. And that is in touching and transforming lives. Proverbs 1130 says this, he who wins souls is wise. Jesus goes, you know what? Who's that person that hears my word and does it? He, that person that does what I'm teaching, that person is wise. We're talking about the same person here. That person that wins souls. There's a wisdom in that. There's a solid foundation in that. And I think instead of beginning to ask constantly, how should I invest financially in this season? How should I react, right, in my career path in this season? I think we should be asking how we should invest spiritually. Can I tell you that it is always the right season to tell someone about Jesus? It is always the right season to bring the light of Christ into somebody's life. It is always the right time. And when my life begins to shift around what is on God's heart, I'm beginning to obey. I'm doing what Jesus said. He said, something's gonna happen in your life. I'm gonna bring stability. Yes, floods will come, but it will be like you're on solid rock. You will not be shifted because you are one of the people that has obeyed my word, that word of commission, that word of commission. The second type of word that God speaks to us that we need to begin to apply is the word of priority, the word of God's priority. Listen to this scripture, Romans 12, verse two says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. This is such a powerful scripture. And what we're challenged to, he says, don't be like everybody else. Don't just be pushed into the mold of the world with their priorities and their values. But he says, you should be transformed. You should be somebody that is different and listen to the result. When you do that, you're gonna be able to know what the perfect will of God is in every circumstance and situation. You will have a different mindset, a different perspective, and my will is gonna be accomplished and established in your life. You see, our priorities reflect our values. Our priorities reflect our values. You know, when people show up late to a meeting, they show up late to a, a lunch appointment, something like that. You, you know what that says? They, they'll tell you a lot of things. Well, it was traffic. Oh, uh, you know, my, my dog had fleas. I had to take care of it. Uh, this happened. That happened with my kids. There's a lot of reasons. But when, when somebody's late, what it means is it, I just, my value is not as much in that meeting as it is in the other things I was doing. I could have left earlier. I could have prepared but, but when my schedule doesn't react, it shows the values I have. My priorities show my values. And God's word actually contains and it sets priorities. It contains priorities and it sets priorities. In other words, the priorities that God has and the priorities that you and I should have in our life should be different than everybody else's. And that's why the Bible says, don't conform to the world. Don't look like everyone else obey the word of God's priorities. You want to be unshakable? You want a foundation for your life that doesn't shift? Then obey the word of God's priority. The, the scripture is full of this. The Bible is full of examples of this, right? Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. What does that mean? First priority, priority before you do other things. He goes, no, you can do other things, but let the priority be the kingdom. So many times in the gospels, Jesus says, hey, first go and do this. First, go and do that. There is a priority and an order to God's kingdom. And there are times that God speaks to our heart and challenges us and makes something a priority for us that might not make sense to others. It might not seem like a priority to others. All of a sudden, when you put your faith in Jesus, your priority shifts. The Bible says we're, we're to gather together and your priority becomes, I need to be on the stream on Sunday. I need to be with my connect group on Friday night while we're going to dinner and my family's gathering. But you say, no, this is a new priority in my life. It's shifted. There's a priority around being with people that, that are believers and a priority around hearing God's word. My priorities are changing. Think about how many times God spoke a word, a priority into people's lives in the scripture. Because I believe that God is speaking to us today about priorities. I believe in this season, he's spoken to so many of our hearts already about priorities. Give me this time of prayer. Hey, focus your life here. Hey, I want you to connect in and get in godly relationship. Hey, you, you need some, some input, some discipleship in your life. The question is, are we following through? Are we obeying? The Bible talks about a man named Noah that God challenged to build an ark. And when everyone else was just partying and having fun, he built an ark. He shifted his priorities. How about Abraham? 
that left his father's house and his country. And God said, get out, go to a new place that I'm gonna show you, have a new priority. Not with the old, your priority will be with the new. David went to battle because of God's priorities. Jesus went to the cross because of godly priorities. Paul traveled to, to Rome because of God's priorities. Listen, when, when we, we fill God's priorities with our lives, when we fulfill those things, we fulfill them based on God's word, something happens because God's priorities contain his blessings. God's blessings are given out in the things that God prioritizes. The, the priorities of our life are what we do first, what we do most. And when we say, God, our heart is to have the same heart as you, the same priority as you, that is where you see the blessing of God come down. When we build our lives according to his priorities, we are establishing ourselves in his way and we are positioning ourselves to receive his promises. The priorities of our life establish us according to his word. The third word that we respond to is not only that word of commission and that word of priority, but how about this, the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. Jesus said, he who hears my teaching and he does it is wise. There is wisdom. Proverbs chapter three, verse five to verse seven says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. You could say it this way. You will be on firm ground, a solid foundation directed by God. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Proverbs says, hey, don't trust your own understanding. Don't try to be wise in yourself. Ask God, there is wisdom that God has for our lives. And this is what I know about wisdom. This is what I know about wisdom. There are times God gives you specific wisdom for specific situations, but even when you're lacking specific wisdom, let me tell you something, obedience is wisdom. Obedience, when I begin to obey the word of God, there is wisdom in that. And everyone that's a parent understands this, that, that, that there is wisdom in obedience and constantly we'll try to guide our children. My parents constantly tried to, tried to guide me. I constantly am trying to guide my kids. Hey, don't do this. Hey, don't do that. This is dangerous. That's not gonna help you. This is bad for you. And the thing is, when you are young, you don't understand everything. You don't know all the implications. But can I tell you, your parents and grandparents and those that have gone before do know the implications. And so even though I lack knowledge, when I obey, I enter into the wisdom of what they're saying and the blessing of that wisdom. And it is the same way with God's word. I don't always have a full picture, but God knows the end from the beginning. And when I obey his word, I walk in the wisdom of his word and my life is rooted on a solid foundation. The Bible shows you what to do when you don't know what to do. This is the amazing genius of God's word, right? It's the, the Bible tells us we don't live by bread alone, but by every what word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And there are moments that God wants to give wisdom to our life. There are moments the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart and reveal something. There are moments you will read in the scripture, a commandment, a direction. And if I would apply that, if I would have the wisdom of God's word in my life, my life would be rooted on a solid foundation. Hey, God will give specific, special wisdom for specific circumstances. Special wisdom for specific circumstances. Some of us are going through crises. Some of us major decisions. You go, I don't know what to do. What's your reaction? Do you Google it? Do you pull your friends? Let me challenge you. Why don't you pray and say, God, I need wisdom. I need wisdom. I can look back at so many times in my life and, and, and my journey with God. And I think, wow, how God led me. And there was so much wisdom in God's word. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know why God asked me to do certain things. But when I look back, I can see the wisdom. And I say, thank God, Lord, those moments that I obeyed you, thank God, you, you, you rescued me, you saved me, you preserved me, you set up my life better than I could have set it up myself. But it, it came in the wisdom of obedience. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it'll be given to him. Do you need wisdom? You can ask. Psalm 51, six, behold, you delight in the truth, uh, in truth, in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. 
God can teach you wisdom. Proverbs 2, 6, for the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. You go, I don't know what to do. I've got an encouraging word for you. God will give you wisdom. Our part is to obey. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, when you open God's word and you see his commands and you begin to put it into practice, there will be wisdom that will come upon your life that will set you apart from other people and keep your life on a solid foundation. Come on, somebody say amen. Listen, a moment of wisdom will set you on a right foundation. Just a moment, a moment of wisdom. What should I say? A moment of wisdom. How should I respond? A moment of wisdom. What should I do? How should I proceed? Don't get so caught up trying to figure out your whole life. Take a moment and say, God, give me wisdom. Show me what I should do. And he will. And as you obey, God places your feet on solid ground. The last one is this. We talked about the word of commission, the word of priority, the word of wisdom. Listen, this isn't just something to to do some kind of Bible survey and kind of give you a little more knowledge and understanding. The challenge is we need to apply it. When I begin to obey his commission, when I begin to respond and obey his priorities, when I put into practice his wisdom and his word, my life starts to become more stable. I take a different path. And the last one is that God speaks to us is the word of faith, the word of faith. Come on, everybody say faith, the word of faith. God leads us in faith. This is how he operates. This is who he is. He always leads us in faith. And that's why when you follow the Lord, there are always challenges. There are always things that are a little beyond your comfort zone a little beyond what you're used to, a little beyond what, you're, what, what would be normally, uh, maybe you feel like you would be capable of. Why? Because God is leading us in faith to trust him. Not only that, but the Bible says this specifically. Let me apply this. God speaks to us and he calls us to believe. How does he lead us in faith? He speaks to us, his word comes, and then he calls us to believe. This is how we first met the Lord. For some of you today, you're listening and you're hearing about Jesus for the first time. You're saying, man, I need a foundation for my life. Listen, God is speaking to you, but that's not enough. God is calling you to believe. And if you would believe in Jesus, the Bible says your sins could be forgiven, your life transformed and changed. He speaks, but then he calls us to believe. And for every one of us that have invited Jesus in our heart, there are constantly times God is speaking to us and challenging us. And the challenge is a challenge of faith. As we respond to that word, we step into the miraculous. As we respond to the word of faith, that's when we see miracles happen. That's when we see God open doors. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God speaks into our heart and that that word is like a seed of faith. That is what ignites faith. And then we have an opportunity and a decision to lay hold of it, to believe, to step out and say, yes, I believe it. Yes, Jesus is my savior. Yes, God, you're with me. Yes, I'm gonna obey you, right? Or I can ignore it and reject it. And Jesus says, the man that hears my word and responds, obeys, builds his life on it, that's someone that builds on solid ground. The one that hears my commission and and responds. The one that hears my priorities and responds. The one that hears hears my wisdom and responds. The one that hears my word and challenge of faith and responds. That person is going to be like someone that built on solid ground. There are moments when God speaks to us to step out by faith. And even though it seems risky, it's building according to his word, but it's a decision every one of us have to make. Hebrews 4, 2 says, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as them. Listen to this. But the word which they heard did not profit or help them because it wasn't mixed with faith in those who heard it. He said, God speaks to everybody. Right now, God is speaking to everybody, but the people it's going to help is the ones that mix that with faith. They hear the word and they respond in faith. When we respond to God's word with faith, we are establishing that secure foundation. You see, God has the power. The power is not the issue. You look at the struggle of your life, the situations you face, the problems you have, the bills that are coming in, the pressure that you're holding. You go, man, I I can't do it. You're right, you can't do it. 
But it's not an issue for God because God has unlimited power. There's no issue with whether God can handle the situations of your life. He can and he will. God has the power, but he asks us for faith. He's not asking you to have the power. He's asking you to have faith. And God speaks to us and stirs us, but we are all called to live in faith. He calls us. He calls us. He's called some of us. He's called you to be a leader in your life. Hey, continue in faith. Don't back down. Don't, don't give up. He's called some of us to nations. He's, he's called us in certain ways to sacrifice or give or step out or to trust him with a relationship. Let me challenge you. Can you continue in faith to believe God for more? Because as you continue in faith, you go, but I can't see the end. I'm not sure how it works out. Yeah, you might not. But there is great security, wisdom, and power when we respond to God's word of faith. Faith is obeying God's word no matter what the circumstance. And in a moment like this, in a situation and season like this, I believe this is a moment that all of us are called not to back down, but to carry on pushing forward in faith. Let me challenge you today, wherever you're at, can we make a decision in our heart to say, I don't want to build according to the, words, the world's plan. I don't want to build according to human wisdom. I want to build according to godly wisdom. Jesus, you said I could have a secure foundation, but you know how he said it? He said, you'll have a secure foundation. Listen to and obey my word. Can we begin to say, Lord, help me to rearrange. Let me make your commission my priority. Let me make the priorities of your word, the values and priorities of my life. God, help me to operate by your wisdom, not just by my wisdom. God, let me not diminish in faith. Let me grow in faith. Hey, God wants to give you a solid foundation today, but you've got to lift up your faith. You've got to believe. You've got to believe. And I just want to, I want to just kind of provoke everyone, stir you up today. Don't, don't just be guided by all of the opinions that you have around you. We need to be guided by the opinion of God. And as a pastor, I got to challenge you. The safest place for you is in obedience to God's word. The safest place for your life is in applying his word. And Jesus said, I'll teach you how to have wisdom. I'll teach you how to weather the storm. I'll teach you how to come out the other side. And it's not the way you think. It's not what you think. It's when you hear my word and obey. It's that other stuff. Yeah, it's fine. But, but, but you need to hear my word and obey. That is what gives you stability. When you obey my word, God says, I, I want to bring all the resources of heaven around you. Some of us are so tired out because we've been trying to figure out how to safeguard our lives. We've been trying to figure out how do I stop the, the rain and the wind and the flood and strengthen everything. And, and, and you got it wrong. You got it backwards. God says, no. You believe in me, you obey me, and I will safeguard your life. I will build you. I will secure you. And it will be like you are built on a solid foundation that will never move. Don't stop trusting his word. Don't back down on his promise. Don't give in and let go of the wisdom of God. Don't pull back from the commission that God gave you. He is placing your feet on solid ground. Come on, someone say amen today. Listen, before I close out, I want to speak directly to everyone that's tuning in and you maybe never invited Jesus into your heart. God is speaking to you today. He's speaking to you. He's letting you know that there is a God in heaven that loves you. He's letting you know that there is a savior named Jesus and that if you would believe in him, you could be saved. See, you can hear this word, but the Bible says you've got to mix it with faith. You've got to respond in faith. And there's a moment right now I want to challenge you to respond. If you've never invited Jesus in your heart, like how I'm talking about it, you can do that today. And the Bible says as you do it, what's going to happen is you're going to find forgiveness. You're going to find relationship with God because Jesus paid the price for your sins and my sins, all of our mistakes. And when I hear about him and I finally know that there's a God that loves me, the only thing he's asking for is faith. The one thing he wants is for us to respond in faith. And so right now, I'm going to challenge you. Would you respond? I want to pray for, with, with everyone that is saying, yes, I want Jesus in my life. And if you're saying yes, you're saying, Jeremy, pray for me. I, I want to be part of this. Would you respond right now? If you're on our church online platform, click that link. Say, yes, I raise my hand. I respond. If you're on YouTube, on Facebook, in any of the chats, just type in, yes, I'm saying yes, I'm responding. Our leaders and pastors are right there with you to encourage you. 
I'm going to lead you in a prayer in a moment. And I want to ask you to repeat this prayer with me. You mean it with your heart. And right now, God's going to transform your life. As you're responding right now, come on, can we prepare our hearts? I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Let's pray together. Just say this right out loud. Say, Jesus, I know that I need you and I want you in my life. Will you forgive me for every sin? Wipe my past away and make me a new person. Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. You died for me. You rose again. And right now you're living in my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done in me. Today, I give my heart to you and I make you my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Hey, it's just that simple, just that easy. And if you believe what you prayed, the Bible says God hears you. He's responding to your faith. Right now, his presence is with you. And if there's anything we can do to encourage you in this, we want to be right there next to you. So would you just follow the instructions right now? They're in every chat platform. Let us help you take your next step with God. For every Christian that's tuning in, every believer today, I want to encourage you. Don't get caught up frantically trying to strengthen the foundation of your life. Do what Jesus said. Respond to his word. He's speaking all the time. He's spoken so many times. Am I, am I responding to that word of commission? Am I responding to his word of priority? Am I responding to those words of wisdom? And am I responding to the words of faith, even when it doesn't make sense, that I would just respond and say, yes, I believe, I trust, I'm standing my ground. Let me pray for us this morning. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. God, right now, we lift up our hearts to you. Father, we pray that you'd make us the people that respond to your word. God, I pray for everybody tuning in right now. This moment would be a moment of transformation. This moment would be a moment where, God, you lift off the weight of trying to stabilize our own life. Let this moment be the time that we have a a conviction about your word. Lord, where we choose in our hearts, God, to, to... truly apply your word. Help us, God, to respond to your commission. Help us to respond and apply it. Father, to know that now more than ever, as we obey, you're stabilizing our lives. Help us to be the ones that have a different perspective, God, a different priority, a different value. Oh God, we pray for wisdom to flow. Father, I pray for each one making decisions and faced, Father, with circumstances where they need to know what to do. Let wisdom from heaven begin to flow, God. And Lord, I pray right now for a strengthening of faith in every heart, a strengthening of faith in every life, that the things that you've called us to, the words that you've spoken, God would not be let go of, we wouldn't turn aside, but more than ever before, we would lay hold of it. More than ever before, Father, we would respond in faith. We would respond in courage and obedience. God, I thank you for it today. Father, we pray that you would do this work in our hearts as we respond to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.